first taped interview with Mr. Robert Callahan. This interview was taped in conjunction with the Oral History Center, Kentucky River Project at Eastern Kentucky University by Todd D. Marbury. The interview took place at Mr. Callahan's home in the station camp community of Estill County, Kentucky, which is near Irvin, Kentucky, on May 13, 1989, at approximately 5.30 in the evening. Interviewing to state your full name and the date she was born. Yeah. Well, now I'm going further than that. I'm going back in my marriage to leave my family. Up to date. All right. Who we are and what we are. All right. That's fine. Is that right? That's fine. Yeah. Well, it's going out. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, you're, to start with your, your full name. Robert Callahan, what they started calling me in 1904, and they still call me. Does <laughs> <laughs> that sound all right? <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. And I married in, in 1922. And he's four children. They all were fine children. I tell you. Their uh, <coughs> background, the way I raised them, I told I never did lie to my children. No, sir, I didn't lie to them. When I told them anything, I didn't fight them, didn't beat them, but I wouldn't lie to them. And my children, they were raised up, they never sassed me. And to say they was proud of me and my wife. And uh, we kept them to way it was up at a pretty good age before they, before they married. They married and they you know, raised a good family. I raised a boy, and he went to service in 1942. He stayed in four year and a half, and he fit under Patton. When he went over there, they, they called out for, uh, for Rangers Battalion. That was kind of a suicide squad. Yeah. He joined up with them. He was wounded four times in uh, 14 major battles. And, he, and his outfit all got killed and captured with him and five more. And they he, yeah, they discharged him now. So they honorable discharge with a good one. Just a good one that a man could have. Is he still living? No, he, he got killed about a year and a half after he come back here. Yeah. But anyway, when he come back, I said, his name was Raleigh. I said, Raleigh? You had a hard road, didn't you? It was rough. And you know what he done? He looked me up in the face and he said, Dad, said the worst it ever been. But now, just to be honest, I may put in there something that you that people don't like. But I don't know where he'd say that today or not. Just to be honest with you, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We've got so much corn in our country today, brother, it's pitiful. Yeah. Ain't it? That's right. Uh, were you born here in Estill County? I was born in Owsley County. Owsley County. Owsley County. We're at in Owsley. Up around Travers Rest. Travers Rest. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, what were your parents' names? Uh, Frank Callahan was my dad's name. And Emily Stone Callahan. She was Stone. Uh, she was Dutch. She was. Yeah, and my daddy was Irish. Callahan, that's about as Irish yeah. as you can get. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. What do you remember about the Kentucky River from the early, first remembrance you have, first memory you have of the Kentucky River? What do you remember about it? Well, uh, uh, now about uh, they used to, before they put locks in, they would run the rails. A lot of graves down in Kentucky River from up around some uh, fur up of uh, Brethy County. We had a sawmill down here at West Thirty, bring them down there. Sold the most of them there. And 
man they put in this box. Now I'm going to tell you about what I know about the law. Now this law can't what the thought is going to be. This lock is a filling up behind the behind the wall with all the logs and everything. And it's getting filled. The IRA was getting filled up pretty bad right now. Just like uh, well, they go ahead and prove it to you. I had a ditch cut over here, it's fourteen foot wide and eight and about six foot deep. And I threw down and let that uh, ditch fill up. And that's fine back what they're doing with this river today. But not letting the, not letting the uh, not it out. Not it out. I don't think I think in ten years or longer that the river the water is seeking level. We know that, don't we? And I believe it's six level. I believe it'll be running all over them both bottoms if they don't do something about it in a, in a few more years. And clean it out. Sir. Clean it out. Right, clean it out. Yes. Did you ever see log grass come down the Kentucky River? Yes, sir. It is. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, maybe they'd be a couple of hundred logs rafted together. One and one and one, that right on out. And then they'd have oars. You said you could tell the oars on a raft? Uh-huh. Had, had oars, and they'd have two men out here, this bow, two at the stern. Put on that raft, pull it over a little. And there's the log, there's something in the river, there's the bank. And they hardly ever hit anything. Oh, so they went out on down. Anymore. Do you remember when any of the locks were put in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe, if I remember right, it was about 1912, 13, 14, I don't know. When they put them in. Yeah. What do you recall about that? Huh? What do you remember about it? Well, uh, and then now, what way? Uh, just any any memory you have associated with with the with the locks being well. There. I think uh, in my uh, the talk well, back then, of course I was kind of young back then. They put them locks in purpose to hold that water up at a level. Uh, they used to be shoals yeah. in the river. You wade across. But what they did then to try to make the River up till it be uh, till they run them barges and things like that. And they year around. That sound about right? <laughs> yeah. Did you ever know any loggers on the river? Mm-hmm. Men that log? Yeah, yeah, I know several of them. I know uh, from the creek down here, back and forth from the, to the river. There'd be Winkle, something there would be Gabbard, and uh, Dixon. And I, I don't know if I just thought to come and tell me long after a long time ago. Yeah. Still, I can uh, kind of refresh my memory. I can uh, remember them. I knew them all. Are there any living now that uh, took part in that that you know of or anywhere around? No, I don't think so. I think they always do. None that live in anywhere, I mean, any of the counties around here? No, that, that not that I know of. No. Yeah, it, uh, I thought, I thought that, well, then it was good. But now, I don't think it's unnecessary. We got uh, trucks on the road. We got trains on the rail. Yeah. And we got airplanes and everything. It's too slow now. Too slow. Have you ever seen any big floods on the Kentucky River? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen backwater from the Kentucky River three miles further up the creek from here. Three miles up the creek? Yeah, further from here. That's, 
that would be the I I say about twelve miles. Hmm. Back water from the river. You know where that fair ground is down here? Yes, sir. Can you show it up? You remember any of the years where there were big water? Uh, well, it's been several years ago since the biggest time we ever had in the, in the river. And I'd say it's been about, oh, 15, 16 years ago. For the last few years, they don't, we don't get them big tides like we used to. Do you remember there was an ice tide years ago that they talked Mighty about? Mighty well, yes. We uh, was, lived in Lee County then. Up there around Elman. And when that ice tide broke loose, it cut trees down on the banks of the, of the river. The sharp edges of the ice? Yes, sir, it cut trees down. Right. It's just big sheets of ice would break loose, uh, plumb across the river. There they come. What happened to all that ice? Did it just melt or? Well, I guess it just eventually he melted and wasted away. He'd come back to water. That's, that's the only thing you can say about it. Did you see any of the ice gorges that were made when... Uh, 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 would stack up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you could see you find them along the case. Yeah. Uh, so I'd say eight or seven or eight feet high. Just pile up. Huh. I guess that was about the only time anybody's seen that on the river. Yeah, about the only time I ever heard it. As well as I remember, that was about 1970. That's in the back several days ago. Yeah, it's been a long time. Now, you take this here creek here, it's what we call a, a wild river. This station camp creek? Yeah, yeah, yeah a wild river. It, it, don't, it don't flow out like the... When he, when we get a tide in that river in this creek here, man, it runs out. Yeah, it, it comes out with a heavy current. You you that went across shoals before now, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Something like that. That creek here. But the river never did do that. Did you ever go down the river on a log raft? I uh, know I went down this creek a few times on a log raft. You have? Yeah. But now we couldn't. We had to have to catch our times on that. Maybe we'd uh, build up a raft to run to the river, and uh, we'd wait several, several weeks, several months, maybe uh, most of the summer to get a tide. The folks stayed out if they wouldn't go out any time we built it up. But there wouldn't be no, no water down to take that. How did you How did you make a raft? Well, you talk about three poles to start with, one through the center, and one on each side, what we call chain dogs. How to, uh, the, the dog would have about uh, about three lengths, and we'd cross that, cross that pole, and drive it down into that log. Now, do you understand me, Yeah. To hold the tie pole in? Hold the tie pole in, yeah, hold the log. Yeah. What kind of timbers did you raft? Uh, well, about in the air, mostly oak. And now another thing about it, that people that never flew with timber, they want to understand this. You got to have, so you got to have your few floaters along yeah. with your log. Now, if they log, if they log heavy oak, he'd be a sinker. But now you got to have enough, uh, popper limb or something like that to uh, to float that heavy heavy oak. I went down this street a few times on raves when I'd been water that deep. You mean on uh, the raft? Yeah, on the raft. Yeah. And it would it would still sink that Yeah, it'd be a sinker. It wouldn't have enough floaters I'd to hold it up. It still wouldn't sink one down. But it'd sink part of the way. Put something like a foot or two foot. How'd you keep it from going all the way down? It wouldn't, it wouldn't go down all the way down. It just wouldn't float. Down. It float. I had what we call a, 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 sunk, a sinking raft. Huh. But now if you put there enough floaters under it, it float up by half a log to be out of the water. And 
you rafted them, so you have rafted logs in Station Camp Creek. Yeah, yeah. Do you, you remember about what time that would have been? That was 19... That 1920. 20? Yeah. They got away from it down there. We got a little better road, a little better transportation, moved them a little faster. And so, we moved them there, the trucks and... What did you have to go through to get them rafted up on Station Camp Creek, though? I mean, uh... Uh, they made me get them down where we found them. Uh-huh. We had maybe, uh, two or four head of cattle, head of cattle. Maybe a few good mules to drag them down. There wouldn't be no bulldogs or nothing like that. Snake them down? Yeah, snake them down out there. What made the best raft? What kind of logs made the best raft, aside from the floaters, I mean? Uh, well, we had a more, about more oak than anything. Why the oak shed and the oak? Uh, yeah, that, uh, well, that is about the general run of timber in this country. Oak? Yeah. yeah. Was there much chestnut then? Just regular yeah. chestnut? Uh, yeah, they had some chestnut. But it seemed like people didn't go for chestnut. That just of course, now they just had a log hammer, but not one like uh, oak. More so the oak. Did you enjoy rafting? Yeah, well, I tell you what, we enjoyed it rafting, and then along well, about uh, 1922, along there, if I was married, sometimes I'd get out and help. So I'd look a float log out in the water. You just wade out in the water. Wade and out in the water. We have waded out when I was eight my kids. I've waded out working with creeks, maybe two or three hours two, breaking jam, and then I'd come back, and I was always kid for, uh, glad for another jam logs to be piled up there so I could get in there and get that ice out of my paint where they froze. My uh, clothes and froze on me. You mean when you'd, you'd have to wade out and break a jam up? In yeah. In, yeah. in the creek. Yeah. How'd you do that? Well, well, we had what was called spike poles, candles, stuff like that. You just broke them up like that? Yeah. Would there be a tide when you'd be doing this? Or yeah, yeah and actually, it had to. Yeah, to get yeah, it out. had to. But the creek would get so low, we'd have to wait till there till, uh, till it come a little tide. Well, we could run the last or run, uh, or, uh, run the loose logs out of the creek. I just said it, <laughs> kind of a joke, but I'll bring you up to date on that section. <laughs> but I wonder uh, if J. Penn would, uh, if they had a lock up here in the dam where they still let it want us to float logs out or not. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would? I don't know if it would or not. I uh, my daughter, she comes to Florida here some time ago, and uh, she got happened to be beside a lady, another lady about her age, pretty talking. She asked her daughter, she asked her daughter where she lived. Well, she's a lot of raised in Kentucky. Did you raise in Kentucky? Yeah. She said, uh, she said, 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 she and then, there was about three guys from New York sitting there listening to them. The lady said, that's the truth. She said, yeah, I reckon Jay Pan does on Kentucky. Well, they've got, a, they've got enough of it, don't they? I think you got a little too much. Way, way too much, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, now, now, you know what? I listened where I, where I was interested in. I was interested in that boy of mine in the service. I expected any time to hear and to give out telegram to the field. I guess what? And listening. I heard him, heard him talking about bumming Pearl Harbor. Named a fellow in the name of Colin Kelly. I don't know whether you ever heard of him or not. 
He was a hero. He was flying a plane there to drop in the bum. And he's missing. You know what he said? When he come out with that plane the last time, said, boy, hang on, said, we're going to sink her this time. You know what he done? What? He hit the side of the plane, had the ship with his plane, they all went down together. Now, you know that, well, he was a full-blood American, I believe, don't you? Yeah. It seems like I've heard that before. Yeah, it seems yes, like sir. I have. Yeah. But, uh, do you remember World War One? Mighty well. Yeah, I had a lot of older friends in that war. Yeah. Do you remember if log did it? Uh, did, how did World War the First World War affect uh, logging any on the river? Uh, well, uh, I was pretty young at that time. Yeah, yeah, I was pretty young at that time. So you don't really remember? No, not too much about it. I remember the war, but I don't. The uh, happenings, I don't remember too much about that. No. Did your dad, uh, was he a was he a raftsman on the river? Uh, no, well, he never did work in that timber mark. He uh, just a plain old farm. Yeah. Uh, do you remember hearing any stories about people rafting logs to uh, Frankfurt? Uh, well, I don't think I ever, I have, I forgot, yeah. Uh, about the only thing I can remember, they were going down the river and raised night. And I said they'd been the night, it began to come big alive. And they couldn't, they still hear chickens crowing, hear chickens crowing. They was wondering whether it was that. And they was in a, in a whirlpool, what we call a whirlpool in the river. Yeah. They was going round and round. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they did that all night. And this is, was on a log raft. Then. Yeah, on a log raft. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they call an eddy, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, the old uh -huh. they call it yeah. eddy. Yeah. Huh. Must have been a pretty good, pretty good sized whirlpool. Yeah. Well, a lot of those whirlpools in the river, they generally cut out on the banks. Of course, I got uh, got pretty wide. Yeah. Especially if it's dark, I don't guess you could really tell. Well, well they couldn't tell where it's at. <laughs> Who was that? Do you know? I I just remember that now, but I'll tell you several times. Huh? It's it sounds like something that uh, that you would hear. Yeah, kind of like uh, that sound. <laughs> uh, boy, he was uh, working in the uh, kind of a singing. He was a kind of what you call a funny man, you know, kind of joke. So he come out one day and he said, Uncle Bob said, you know a joke? He sent me a, something be kind of funny to tell people. And I said, no, it's one. He said, what is that? I said, well, I had a coon dog one time. Name of Blue, and I said, you're the best coon dog I ever hunted with. I went hunting with him one night. And uh, he treated a coon up a big tree. And I looked all around and didn't see it. Boys with me, I said, it's one time he fooled you, ain't it? I said, I don't know. So. Did you want to do some work right here at the church house? There's a little dirt out there, and down, a little, just a little bank, this side of the door, where you go up on the hill, where you, yeah. where you go up there. I wouldn't mind to have that pushed off. Well, and now, uh, uh, if you want to push it off, I bring it, uh, just bring it and dump it over the bank. Oh, okay. Dump it over that hole? Yeah, yeah. The the church yeah, it'll be all right, yeah. yeah. And now, uh, I come back and got my axe. I said, I don't believe that. <laughs> And that knot hole man, he healed over. Mm -hmm. I cut into that knot hole and I laid the coon's bones. Didn't I? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, right? Yeah, that's yeah. a joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever hear anything about the Indians coming to Frankfurt? Yeah. Yeah. Did he use it in his material? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he got a lot of laughs over that. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the dog was true, though, wasn't it? The dog yeah. wasn't lying. Yeah. 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 
Now, what are you, what, what are you going to do with that? You going to put it in? No, we just collect the interviews. We don't write any books or anything. Now, somebody at some point may take now, all these uh, interviews. Well, now, who, who pictures us? Who pictures the state? Uh, the state. Yeah, it's through the state. Uh, through the, it's called the Oral History Commission. We go out and interview all kinds of people about different subjects. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. We've interviewed uh, all the county judges in Kentucky. Yeah. We've interviewed all the living governors. We've interviewed now the project I've been working on. This one's called the Kentucky River yeah. Project. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, I had that day where they've been. Uh, he flying plane that flew in there for the last two years. So they've been working on this here uh, marijuana business. And said so they pretty well got it cleaned out. They told they told three more they states they were going, Tennessee, Indiana, and I forget the other they were going. Okay. I think that'd be a pretty good thing. Though. Well, did uh, did you ever see uh, well hemp growing in the river bottoms? Uh, uh, well, now back in uh, in the thirties, the year of the drought, the government kind of yeah, they put out uh, give you so much for growing hemp. They would pay you so much for growing hemp, which we never grew none, and I never paid enough attention to it. They never know what it was. Didn't know then that it was. What they later called marijuana. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Do you, what? Do you remember any real dry years way back? Yeah. On not, the river? Yeah. In, in 1930. 1930. Yeah. What do you recall about that on the river? Well, the water got mighty low, awfully low. This here creek got so low, which about all you would tell about it was little little potholes here and now. When those shoals, that shoals dry. And that's on the, and the river, it got, it got awful low. Awful low. What did you do for water then? Uh, we had that well right out there. It was about three feet. It's clear, you know that. Then that doctor's talking to me about before when you get that water, you get the pure water, you had to go out. I told him, why? But that's right. That all you get out of this river stream is a purifier to kill that germ. That's everything you get. That water ain't pure. It's germ choke. Well, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So much they put in so much of these water treatment plants. So yeah. Well, he said... You take the river up down it, maybe four, five, three, four miles from everybody's house. Two or three, an old horse, an old cow, late in that old summer. Said, you drink enough of those, okay? Yeah, you drink enough of them. Said, all you, all you say about it, uh, about it, you just got a, a germ killer in there to kill that germ. Kill that germ. Do you remember any other dry years? I've heard them talk about it. another year in the 30s it was real dry. Do you remember it? Well, I think, uh, yeah, I, but it wasn't as dry as the one I was speaking of. It's pretty dry, but it wasn't as dry as the one I was speaking of. Still, now you take this creek band here. It don't matter how many tides. I, we've got about 18 acres over there. And we raised about eight or 900 bushels of corn. Yeah, Years ago, or still do? Still do. When we came, now we didn't tell. Now they didn't cultivate like we cultivated. Yeah. But about here, we they and it never was. We've been here since 1970. On the same place. On this same place. And we never bought a year of corn since we've been here, and we kept stock, hog, cattle, and everything else. Creek, uh, it never hurt. So you say creek land is is got is richer. Yeah, it's, it's, and every time it comes, people say, well, it come a tide, it hurts you. No, that tide hurt hell. It left sediments on that on the ground. Fertilizer. Fertilizer. That's right. Sure does.
That's the reason we think so much. We call it God's country up to Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it is. It's, it's pretty up through here. Well, I mean, what it is, we've been here since 1917. It's a long time to be in one, one place. And me and my wife married in 1922. We never moved over the farm. Now, if we had like to, we'd, we'd been gone with it. Yeah, yeah I've, I've been in Canada. I've been all over most of the United States and Canada. I think I love Canada. We get in Canada. Yeah, I have been there. It's beautiful. It's, well, what it is, I, I was there at uh, listening to news. They once town there in Canada. I forget now how many how many years it's been since it's had air arrest in that one town. Yeah, not as much crime as we've got here. That's right. right. And I tell you what, the fellow told me now. Of course, we got we got to abide by our government. But what the fellow told me, he said they won't allow all that sort of stuff in there. I don't know what that yeah. stuff won't allow. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> now you, I had you yeah, some time ago, and you have too. For Cuba, one time, old Castro run a ship load down from the United States, yeah. laughed at him. Several years, about ten years yeah. ago. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, uh, laughing about dumping his killing on his trash on there. Yeah. On that. In Miami, Florida. Yeah, yeah, that's where it was. Yeah, yeah Miami, Florida. Is there anything else that comes to mind about the about the river or any or the station camp that you care to? Well, that's all I reckon. That's all I remember right now. All I, well, I always like fishing. <laughs> so there's an awful lot of good fish out of station camp. Yeah. Did you ever do any basket fishing? Yeah, yeah. That's something. I, I told him to a lawyer, I mean, him a little Ken over there, and he came up there one day and he was fishing him. Then the people down. Well, I said, you got a basket? No, yeah. So I'm going to tell you what kind of bait to put in so if you know you, you catch it. I go ahead. Then I get your bar of cheese. And go goes up about three pieces, piece it back in the basket. So then the piece of you get. This be the iron fist with a you in the basket. In one of the old time hoop baskets, or one that's yeah, yeah, knit yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I made another one. Of what kind of cheese was it now? Uh, these have uh, bar cheese. Yeah. yeah, you got some of this. Yeah, know. yeah, they just cut you off. Piece of basket. In the basket. In the basket. Right in the basket. I called. One time I went over. The, <laughs> I I picked up a basket to come down the creek. I, it wasn't the sound that I thought it might ought to be. It wasn't the sound that it was. It just went that way. The whole them piece. And I went over there and made my basket up real good. Went back in about a week. I picked that basket up. I was inside my bowl. And when the mistress lifted the door, he came apart and here went my feet. <laughs> I bet I'd say I had six pound fish in there. Cats? No, they're mostly scale fish. That's what they were. Yeah. Huh. You mean they'll go scale fish will go for uh, cheese like uh, uh, well, like cats? Well, I'll tell you anything about any kind of fish. Really. Oh. Yeah. When's the best time to fish down here on station camp? Well, we usually start fishing about about April. And fish up about hot part of summer, about August. And let up a while. Yeah. I tell you, you don't think something come up sometime, I'll go get a 12 foot boat out there. I do that sometime. 